Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Thursday, December the 3rd, 2009. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London. In Mexico City, it's 10.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX or receive our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. Just a little programming note, we're going to be running a different commercial today. We have a new sponsor, one of our sister companies, the Cadex Global Exchange, has prepared an ad that we're going to run at the break. Might be worth hanging around for. On this day in history, in 1984, could it have been this uh, long ago, 4,000 people died after a cloud of gas escaped from a pesticide plant operated by Union Carbide in Bhopal, India. Seems like it was just the other day. We have some uh, non-reinsurance uh, non, uh, news. Uh, Comcast, which is a very big American uh, internet service provider as well as cable TV network, has purchased 51% of NBC, the network, the TV network, from General Electric. General Electric is going to retain a 49% stake. It's a very big deal. Uh, this marks the first time that an American uh, ISP and uh, cable uh, provider has actually managed to obtain a, a content uh, producing entity such as the National Broadcasting Company which produces shows. So it could be a very good deal for Comcast. Comcast is headquartered locally. They're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Very well-run company. Now to our main news. The Bank of America has announced that it will repay its $45 billion government bailout and issue $20.5 billion in new stock. It's going to boost the bank's chance of attracting a new chief executive officer. But this means that the bank will repay the TARP, the federal bailout mechanism, and the taxpayers will be made whole. BOA announced that it would use about $26 billion in excess liquidity, plus about $19 billion they're going to raise from selling common stock actually common securities to repay the taxpayer bailout it accepted last year. The bank will ask its shareholders for permission to transform the common securities into common equity. The bank will then boost its capital cushion by raising $4 billion from asset sales by next June. Another $1.7 billion of restricted shares will be issued so the bank can pay back some executives their year-end bonuses in stock rather than cash. The bank repayment, they think, could make it easier for them to find a replacement for Ken Lewis, who will retire as chief executive at the end of the year. Uh, retiring, he should be uh, escorted out. That's just the view of some. Uh, the Bank of America, however, will still be constrained by salary restrictions imposed on the bank by the White House Pazar, Ken Feinberg, until it repurchases warrants it issued to the government at the time of the bailout. The compensation limits imposed by the White House are thought to have deterred potential replacements for Mr. Lewis, causing the bank to miss its self-imposed deadline to obtain a new CEO. Here's a very interesting story. Uh, Steve Poisner, the uh, California Insurance Commissioner pictured here, uh, might be onto something. He said yesterday that he's going to push insurance companies doing business in California to divest up to $12 billion in indirect investments in Iran's defense, nuclear, energy, and banking industries. He said he's going to urge the insurers to voluntarily sell the investments they reported to his office. If they refuse, he's going to try to force them to divest the money so that funds and premiums paid by California policyholders are not flowing to Iran. He also intends to subpoena executives from other companies that didn't answer his question about investments in Iran. Poisoner is lining up support from other state insurance commissioners, even as insurance companies object to a state-by-state -state approach that they say could interfere with U.S. foreign policies. It's interesting the insurance company has a, a foreign policy department now. California Insurance Commissioner Kevin McCarty he said he's consulting other states' commissioners to see if it's practical to develop a national effort similar to California's. The Pennsylvania commissioner said we ought to do it through states, but in a coordinated fashion. The companies in California were required to disclose investments in companies that do at least $20 million of business in Iran's petroleum or natural gas industries 
and list investments of any amount that they may have with companies doing business in Iran's banking, nuclear, or defense industries. Back in June, the California Commissioner ordered 1,327 companies that do business in California to report their direct and indirect investments in Iran. About 250 of those companies are actually headquartered in California. California is the world's fourth largest insurance market. The Commissioner's Review found no direct investments in, thank God, in, in Iran, thank God, which would violate a California law that took effect this year. The companies did report $12 billion in legal indirect investments. The department's been able to verify about $6 billion of those investments so far. Another 216 insurers have not bothered to respond. These are the ones that the commissioner is going to subpoena. Very interesting. Some U.S. economic news, American farm, non-farm business productivity increased at about an 8.1 annual rate in the third quarter. It's a little bit down from the 9.5% estimated a month ago. However, uh, it uh, increased in manufacturing at an annualized 13.4% rate. That's a record rate. Jobless claims fell 5,000 down to 457,000. They dropped now for the fifth straight week. Uh, so the total of 457 was uh, significantly lower than the 480,000 that economists had been expecting. Tomorrow is the big day, though. The Labor Department is going to come out with the November unemployment rate. Stock market's uh, up about six points right now. The Insurance Day uh, had an interesting story today, an interview on an article written by the editor Richard Banks, who we've interviewed on this show. Perils AG, that's the name of the company, which was established this year in Zurich to aggregate and provide industry-wide European cat insurance data, has launched its industry loss index for European windstorm events. The European Industry Loss Initiative was launched today. It aims to replicate the success of the PCS index by becoming a standard benchmark for the insurance link capital markets. According to Perils, the index will provide, quote, an accurate and robust loss trigger for ILS, industry loss warranties, and other capital market products. The firm's CEO, Luzi Hitz, said that he was, quote, optimistic that the first deal using a Perils trigger would probably be an ILW contract and would close early in 2010. Perils is owned by its founding shareholders, 10% each. They include Allianz, AXA, Generali, Groupama, Guy Carpenter, Munich Re, Partner Re, Swiss Re, and Zurich. You have that group together and they've agreed to pool their data so that you can come out with a verifiable index. That's a pretty good start. Good job by Mr. Hitz, Dr. Hitz, I should say. Swiss Re made some news of its own. They uh, came out with their $150 million cat bond, Successor X. It's unknown whether it's Successor X or Successor 10, as in the Roman numeral. We don't know that. The bond gives protection for North Atlantic hurricane, European windstorm, and Cal quake. It covers a one-year risk period ending late next year. It's a special purpose vehicle. Uh, Swiss Re's chief underwriting officer, Brian Gray, said, that this helps us to manage peak natural catastrophe risk, it lowers capital requirements, and reduces earnings volatility. The successor offering consists of three series of notes of $50 million each. One class of the notes is rated B- minus by S&P. The other classes have not been rated. Here's the trick. All classes of notes were issued as discount notes. Instead of purchasing the note at 100% face value, Investors purchase it at a discount and expect to receive 100% of the face value at maturity, of course, assuming no trigger occurs. According to Swiss Re, this innovative feature will allow for more efficient use of the cash proceeds. Swiss Re's Capital Markets Group acted as the sole manager and book runner. Equicat did the risk modeling. AIG has settled on a uh, form for their listing for uh, American International uh, Assurance Company, AIA. For the IPO, they've chosen Hong Kong. AIG said back in the spring it was going to float the unit on an Asian bourse. It didn't specify which one. However, people are saying that AIG has appointed Deutsche Bank and Morgan Stanley as joint global coordinators for the IPO. It hasn't named the rest of the book runners yet, but it is going to be being run out of Hong Kong.